Japanese are conducting exercises not just for tsunamis but also for war. Two Chinese government ships entered the Japanese waters. Philippines, Malaysia and Vietnam. These are among nations that challenge Chinese claims in the region. China has been flexing its muscles in Asia, asserting its claims and interest over disputed territories, resources, and trade routes. China has also been intimidating and provoking its neighbors, such as Japan, Malaysia, South Korea, and Taiwan, with its military and diplomatic pressure. China has made a lot of enemies in Asia, and now it seems like these nations have had enough. Two of them, Japan and Malaysia, have recently taken bold actions that have shocked China to its core. What exactly have they done, and what does this mean for the balance of power in the region? Join us as we discuss how Japan and Malaysia just shocked China. Asia is a continent of diverse cultures, histories, and geopolitics, but it also is a region where many conflicts and tensions are simmering. China, as the most populous and powerful country in Asia, is involved in several of these disputes, some of which have the potential to escalate into major wars. In this article, we will examine some of the most pressing issues that China is facing in Asia and how they affect regional and global stability. One of the most contentious issues is China's claim to almost the entire South China Sea a vast body of water that is home to abundant natural resources such as oil, gas, and fish, and that carries about a third of the world's maritime trade. China has asserted its sovereignty over the sea by building artificial islands and military bases on some of the reefs and rocks, and by frequently confronting and intimidating the naval and fishing vessels of other countries that have overlapping claims, such as the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. China has also disregarded the verdict of an international tribunal in 2016, which ruled that China's claim had no legal basis and violated the rights of other claimants. Another source of friction is China's dispute with Japan over the ownership of the Senkaku Daioyu Islands, a group of eight small and uninhabited islands in the East China Sea. The islands are controlled by Japan but claimed by China, which considers them part of its historical territory. China has been sending naval and coast guard ships and aircraft to patrol the waters and airspace near the islands and has sometimes breach Japan's territorial boundaries. China has also declared an air defense identification zone over the East China Sea, which requires foreign aircraft to identify themselves, follow China's instructions. However, Japan's ADIS also covers the same area and disputed islands, creating a risk of miscalculation or collision. A third issue that is causing tension is China's relationship with Taiwan, a self-governing island that China regards as a renegade province that must be reunited with the mainland by force if necessary. Taiwan, on the other hand, has a a separate political and cultural identity from China and has been seeking international recognition and support for its sovereignty and democracy. China has been increasing its military and diplomatic pressure on Taiwan by conducting frequent military exercises and flights near the island and by isolating Taiwan from the international community. China has also opposed any official contact or arms sales between Taiwan and other countries, especially the United States, which is Taiwan's main ally and security guarantor. Another issue is China's border dispute with India, especially along the line of actual control, which is the de facto boundary between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. The LAC is not clearly demarcated. Both sides have different perceptions on where it lies, leading to frequent standoffs and skirmishes. In 2020, the situation worsened when China and India clashed violently in the Galwan Valley, which is part of the disputed Ladakh region. The clash resulted in the deaths of 20 Indian soldiers and an unknown number of Chinese soldiers and was was the worst incident between the two countries in decades. Since then, China and India have amassed tens of thousands of troops and weapons along the LAC and have held several rounds of talks to ease the tension, but with little progress. While many of the countries involved in these disputes have formed alliances and coalitions to counter China's assertiveness, Malaysia has adopted a more neutral and pragmatic stance. Malaysia has a long history of dealing with the challenges and opportunities of major power competition, having been colonized by several European powers and influenced by the Cold War dynamics. Malaysia recognizes that major power rivalry is an inevitable and enduring feature of international politics and that it needs to balance its interests and values in a complex and changing environment. Therefore, Malaysia has pursued a strategy of equidistance diplomacy, which means that it maintains good relations with all major powers without aligning itself with any of them. This allows Malaysia to hedge against the uncertainties and risks 
of the regional and global order and to preserve its autonomy and flexibility. Malaysia also seeks to diversify its economic and security partners and to promote multilateral cooperation and dialogue, especially within ASEAN, as a way of enhancing its options and leverage. However, Malaysia's neutral stance may not last for long as Japan and Malaysia have recently agreed on a security assistance deal that includes a grant of 400 million yen, which is about $2.8 million, to enhance Malaysia's maritime security capabilities. The deal is part of Japan's effort to support Asian nations that are facing China's growing assertiveness and coercion in the region, especially in the South China Sea and the East China Sea, where China has been challenging the status quo and the rules-based order. The security assistance deal was signed by the foreign ministers of Japan and Malaysia on the sidelines of a Tokyo summit that celebrated the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Japan and the Association of Southeastern Asian Nations, or ASEAN. Japan's foreign ministry said in a statement that Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida welcomed the upgrade of the Japan-Malaysian relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership which reflects the deepening of their cooperation in various fields, such as politics, economy, security, and culture. The statement also said that Japan and Malaysia shared the view that the South China Sea issue should be resolved peacefully and in accordance with international law, and that they would work together to uphold the freedom of navigation and overflight in the region. Malaysia is not the only ASEAN member that has a stake in the South China Sea, where China claims almost all of the strategic waterways that are rich in natural resources and vital for global trade. The South China Sea is estimated to have 11 billion barrels of oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in proven and probable reserves as well as abundant fish stock that supports the livelihoods of millions of people. The South China Sea also carries about a third of the world's maritime trade, worth about $3.4 trillion in 2016, and connects the Pacific and Indian Oceans, making it a key strategic corridor. The Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Brunei also have overlapping claims with China and have been involved in disputes and incidents with China's naval and coast guard vessels and militia boats, which have been harassing and intimidating the other claimants and interfering with their fishing and exploration activities. China has also ignored the ruling of an international tribunal in 2016, which invalidated China's claims and affirmed the rights of other claimants under the International Law of the Sea, namely the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which China is a signatory of. Recently, China and Japan exchanged accusations of maritime incursions after a tense encounter between their coast guards near the islands. China said that Japan had violated its sovereignty and security by entering its territorial waters, while Japan said that China had infringed on its sovereignty and threatened its peace and stability by sending its ships into its waters. Japan's aid to Malaysia is part of a broader strategy to provide developing countries with financial assistance to bolster their defenses, especially in the maritime domain, where China has been expanding its presence and influence. Japan has also signed a similar deal with the Philippines and Bangladesh this year and has pledged to support the capacity building of other countries in the Indo-Pacific region. Japan's plan, which was announced in April, aims to enhance the security and stability in the region and to promote the rule of law and the freedom of navigation and overflight. In the three-day summit that ended on Sunday, December 17th, Japan also offered ASEAN members support to boost their standing as international actors and help them manage their relations with others, including China, said an official at Japan's foreign ministry. Japan and ASEAN have a strong and comprehensive partnership based on shared values and interests and have cooperated on various issues such as trade, investment, development, disaster relief, and counterterrorism. Japan also supports ASEAN's centrality and unity in the regional architecture and respects ASEAN's outlook on the Indo-Pacific, which emphasizes inclusiveness, openness, and cooperation. Kushida is expected to meet separately with the leaders of all the ASEAN members, which also includes Cambodia, Singapore, Thailand, Laos, and Timor-Leste to discuss bilateral and regional issues of mutual concern. Kushida will also seek to strengthen Japan's ties with each of the ASEAN countries and explore new areas of cooperation, such as digital transformation, green growth, and human security. Japan and ASEAN have a long and complex history of relations which have evolved over time from being mainly based on economic cooperation to encompassing security and strategic dimensions. In the past, Japan's assistance 
resistance to the developing economies of ASEAN was partly motivated by its desire to atone for its wartime atrocities and to regain the trust and confidence of its neighbors. However, in recent years, Japan and ASEAN have found more common ground and shared interest in the security realm as they face the challenge of China's rising power and assertiveness in the South China Sea, where China has been building artificial islands and militarizing the disputed waters. The leaders of Japan and ASEAN, in a joint statement issued after their summit, called for strengthening their mutually beneficial partnership and working together for peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific. They also expressed their commitment to pursue greater prosperity for the region and to promote people-to-people -people exchanges among the younger generations who will shape the future of the region. Kashida told a joint news conference with Indonesian President Joko Widodo, this year's ASEAN chair, that Japan and ASEAN share the vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific, which is based on the rule of law and universal values. We affirm the shared view to promote a rules-based Indo-Pacific region that is free and open and embraces key principles such as ASEAN's unity and centrality, inclusiveness and transparency, the joint statement said. The leaders also stressed respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, settlement of differences or disputes by peaceful means, and renunciation of the threat or use of force, but without naming China, which has been accused of violating these principles by its actions in the South China Sea and the East China Sea. The leaders adopted an implementation plan for 130 projects covering various areas of cooperation, such as trade, investment, connectivity, digital economy, Japan also called to step up cooperation in security and defense while reinforcing support for efforts in climate change and investment, including the region's automotive industry, which is one of the key sectors of Japan ASEAN economic relations. However, the situation in the region is not so simple, as not all ASEAN countries have the same view or approach toward China, with many of them having close economic and cultural ties and being hesitant to antagonize or alienate. Japanese officials say they are aware of the diversity and complexity of the ASEAN countries and their relations with China, and they are not trying to force them to choose sides or to form an anti-China coalition. But this might begin to change soon, especially with the announcement of the security deal between Malaysia and Japan, which could signal a shift in Malaysia's neutral and pragmatic stance toward China. The deal could also encourage other ASEAN countries to seek more security assistance and cooperation from Japan and other partners, such as the United States, Australia, and India, which are also part of the Quad, an informal group of democracies that share a common vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.